As of March 2022, the OZEV grant is gone. There will be no longer be a £350 grant for home electric vehicle chargers to be fitted to your home. Apart from very, some very unique cases, which we'll explain in this video. Also in this video, we're going to explain what might happen to EV chargers. Are we going to see a rise of £350 on the cost of installing EV chargers? Or are we actually going to see a drop of £350 on EV chargers? Stick around for today's video to find out more. Firstly, if you've got an electric vehicle or you're buying an electric vehicle and you haven't yet got an EV charger installed, then check out my series on electric vehicle chargers on my channel where I've reviewed the majority of most popular EV chargers in the UK and I've done a video on why really you shouldn't be charging on a free pin granny cable from your house as an everyday use. If you want to find out that series, check it out down below in the description also, if you're wanting to get a charger fitted, then check out evnick.com forward slash charge where I can find a list of installers to get a charger put in your home. Now, if you're wanting to get a charger fitted under the grant, there is a limit of the government money that will pay out. However, it will end regardless on the February, mid-February, so you need to get a grant application in by then. And the last install that, where the grant will be claimed will be the 31st of March. However, like I just said, there's a physical limit of that money so if you do delay there is a small chance that that pocket of money gets finished before you even think about getting your EV charger so should you get it installed now or do I think the charge prices might come down by the grant price because many people have theorized that the grant doesn't actually take £350 off the price of an install and there's a little truth in that now charges have gone up in cost over the last three years they've gone up in the last two years so if you had an ev charger fitted four years ago and you're recommending to people on ev forums they can get them fitted for 100 200 quid that's not going to happen a couple of reasons the grants changed in price it's gone it's been reduced massively since it first came out and the cost of electric vehicle chargers has gone up and not because of the grant gone up because of electrical safety so we knew how now have new regulations for electric safety 80th edition regs and because Olazev have now deemed that all EV chargers must be smart and we're going to get into this again because there's also legislation that they're not supposed to be selling and nobody is supposed to be selling non-EV smart chargers in the UK. So will the cost of chargers drop by 350 quid, which is exactly what the grant is now? Well, let's be honest, there is a lot of companies that make EV chargers, a lot. I've reviewed over nine of them from different companies that all make different chargers, all competing for the same market of the same people, and they are outstripping supply, but, if you're outstripping supply, why would you drop your prices? And also, if you're tr constantly battling and in a competition with your competition to steal their customers to buy your charger, why aren't you already giving the best price to beat your competition? And the question is, they already are. The competition in EV chargers is so high that I honestly don't see any drop of the cost of an electric vehicle charger being significant enough that you'll notice it, especially when the grant goes away. I, I think that that is just silly. However, engineers are installing these chargers and engineers are the ones that claim back your 350 grant. And there is, let's be fair to an engineer, there's quite a lot of extra work on top of your chargers to do. Now, first of all, some electricians will charge a full day rate for this, for, for an install. A full electrician, you know, ranges from where you live between about 200 to about 400 pound for a day. And yes, it doesn't always take them a day, but most engineers who are self-employed or small engineers, this is what they tend to sort of budget for. Next, they've got to fit a consumer unit, break your tails and fit the charger. There's quite a lot of work there. There's possibly some armored cable, might have a long run, you might have a difficult run. There's a lot of extra money and that's what tends to push up most people's installs. The most people with standard installs tend to get the quoted price on most websites. Now we've got rid of that part. So there's still not the, the, the correlation for the 350 pound grant coming off the total prices. And that is got some truth in it. And the reason that is, 
Not only have engineers got extra equipment that they've got to buy for testing EV chargers, dedicated EV electricians who are doing EV chargers have proper test equipment to test the EV chargers, specialist knowledge, so they tend to want a little bit more money than your average Joe electrician, and they have to fill out the OZEV paperwork for that £350 grant, which I can tell you from a friend who used to be a national fitter is a nightmare, and they don't always get paid immediately. As in, they sometimes just have a grant application declined because they forgot to dot an I or tick a box in a certain page of this really complicated form that's overly complicated, I think deliberately, to make engineers not want to claim the grant. And once they finally ticked all these boxes, how, what's, what's the latest some people that engineers have been paid? Well, I know an engineer that's still being waited to be paid for an OZEV application he did for an install over nine months ago. So if you are waiting for that money and cash flow as an engineer, you're not going to knock the 350 off. You're going to knock a little bit off, but not the 350 because the paperwork isn't really worth your hassle. And you've got admin time to deal with all this. So most engineers will, are probably not knocking the actual figure of 350 off what they'd normally charge if you just got them to do it without an OZEV grant. But it'd still be cheaper than if you just got them without the OZEV grant. It's the 31st of March, the grant has now finished and you apply for an EV charger install. Are you gonna see an increase of 350 pound? And I think short term, probably yes. I think you're gonna see an increase of maybe 300, 325 pound on the cost of an EV charger as soon as the grant's gone. However, long term, as in, 12 months on, I think that you'll probably see that price slowly creep down and maybe we'll only see a £200 increase. Now, I honestly do think four years away that we'll probably likely see the price of EV chargers radically falling because I think the, 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 the whole SMET market of EV installers and SMET meter installers, I think that those SMET meter installers, as they run out of SMET meters to install, you're going to have a very large redundant workforce there that might be able to also fit EV chargers at a much sort of large scale discounted rate or even be swapping SMET meters with EV chargers. So I think maybe we're talking very long term, three to four years plus, I think we'll start to see the prices come down in EV chargers. But I do think short term, we're pretty much at the level they're going to cost. And speaking to a lot of the manufacturers and having you know in-depth conversations with them i don't think there's a great tremendous amount of profit in an ev charge point itself so there's not even going to be some production quality or production limits that are going to bring down the cost of the physical units and engineers aren't going to start suddenly reducing wages especially with the uk inflation at the moment through the roof now i mentioned OZEV required all EV chargers to be smart, and I also mentioned that a lot of 18th edition reg stuff has made chargers more expensive. So do I think with the gone of OZEV, are we going to see suddenly loads of cheap foreign imports that don't follow UK electrical code and CE marking? Well, the fact is, we're already seeing some of them fly in uh, on certain selling marketplaces, and to be honest, most engineers will not touch them with a barge pole. It'll just be some DIYers that wanna fit their own electric seven kilowatt charge point, and which they shouldn't do, because technically, you shouldn't do it under most e home insurance policies. Now, changing a plug socket, changing a light switch, that is considered something that you're allowed to do as a home user. But something that's seven kilowatts, you're not supposed to be fitting yourself. So if you are fitting a seven kilowatt charger and you're not an electrician, just bear in mind that uh, if that you know circuit ever catches fire, you might have invalidated your house insurance. And if you have your EV charger connected to your house and a family inside it, just consider what might happen to your family. Moving on from that, do I think that we're gonna see more non-smart chargers, but compliant smart chargers? So still following the safety regs and pen fault detection because any decent electrician will not fit a EV charger without the red required protection, be that a separate pen device, an earth rod, or a charger that already has pen fault be it built in. But let's just say that that engineer is now fitting it. Do I think that that charge point will have smart? Well, under 
under the WTO guidelines set out by the government, it actually mandates that all EV charge points sold today have to be smart. That all EV charge points in the UK that are fitted have to be smart. Now, I know, because I've reviewed one, that there is charge points that you can get delivered, shipped to the UK that aren't smart. And I'll be honest with you, if you are thinking of getting an EV charge point fitted and it's not smart, I think you're going to pay through the nose in electricity in the future. I think all electricity tariffs in the next four to five years plus will all be dynamic and all smart, very similar to the way Octopus Go, Agile and some other tariffs from other companies do work. Now I did say the grant's staying for some. That's right, if you are a landlord, you can apply for a grant for your tenant or flats. So if you are a landlord of just a one house and you want to fit a charge point for your possible new tenants or current tenants, then you can get one fitted. You can claim the £350 grant. And if you are an owner of an apartment block with a car park, you can apply for a £350 grant for each socket up to 200 sockets. And if you're asking me why should you as a landlord fit an EV socket to your tenant's house or your multi-story car park that you may have for your flats. Well, let's put it this way. If, if it was you and you're about to rent a house or rent an apartment and you have a vehicle and you know that all vehicles have to be electric from new in 2030 onwards, would you rent somewhere with an EV charger or one with not? So this is where we get to the point where people will pick units, pick places to rent based on their facilities, just like they have facilities inside like showers, baths or other conveniences, EV chargers will be considered a facility that people require and need, just like any other facilities that you may already provide like a fully furnished flat or a fully furnished house. So consider that and also consider that the grant went away for home users mid-February mid 2022. So that means that the landlord grant could go away and in which case you're gonna to have to pay full cost for it like all the other people are doing right now. So if you are a landlord, consider doing it. What do you think is going to happen to the EV landscape and EV charge landscape? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you very, very much for watching this week's video and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.